My name is Nana Sato Rosberg. I'm head of languages, cultures, and linguistics. みなさん、こんにちは。私の名前は佐藤ロスベアグナナです。えー、現在、私は言語文化研究家というところの長をしております。My expertise is translation studies. えー、その学科でですね、私はトランスレーションスタディーズという学問を教えております。At SOAS School of Oriental and African Studies, we offer MA translation and PhD in translation studies.、えー、私の就労している SOAS School of Oriental and African Studies。という研究大学ではですね、修士レベルの翻訳学、そして博士レベルでのトランスレーションスタディーズのプログラムを提供しております。Welcome to my class. I hope you enjoy. 今日はようこそ私のオンラインコースにいらっしゃいました。どうぞ最後まで楽しんでいってください。えっと、日本語でのおしゃべりはここまでとなります。From here, I speak only English. Let's enjoy. Please prepare your laptop or mobile phone. So, first, let's talk about the definition of translation. What is translation? What is translation? I'm asking you. Hmm? Okay, I think it's not that bad, but I think it's time to look this app in the dictionary. I'm gonna give you three minutes. Please check it up. Right, so now. I think you have a clear picture of the definition of translation. This is a typical definition of translation, the English one. Oh, I hope you do understand the Japanese a bit. Right, if not, you can use a dictionary. So, next, please find out the translation of translation. In Japanese. I'm gonna give you one minute. Have you found? Yeah. In Japanese, it says honyaku. Right. Honyaku is a translation word of translation. That's the standard translation. Now, the question is what's the definition of honyaku in Japanese? Is it exactly the same as English one? Right. So, let's look this up in a dictionary the definition of Japanese honyaku. If you don't read the Japanese, I'm sorry, just wait a bit. All right, this is the definition of honyaku.、Oh, just in case, I translated it into English as well. Let's compare those definitions. What did you find?、Mm -hmm. Right, okay, exactly. The definition does not. Much, 100%. Some are overlapped, some are not. Hmm, but then if you have to translate translation into Japanese, you have to use the word honyaku. Actually, this is the entrance of、um, translation studies, and this is an actually never ending question when you translate. Uh, something into something. Do you know Mona Baker? Mona offers 
a taxonomy of equivalence. She proposed five categories, such as word level, combinations of words and phrases, grammatical level, and so on. When we think about translating English into Japanese, we have to think about um, cultural difference as well. How can, you, can we translate um, this cultural context? And what about um, different style of languages? For example, grammatical order is totally different. Hmm. And as we've seen already, even a word level, it is very difficult to find a perfect matching. I'm going to use example from a translating lyrics. Do you know this song? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. So first, let me look at a standard German translation. Because sometimes it's good to compare with some other European languages. Um, okay. Funker, funker, kleiner Stern. Ach, wie bist du mir so fern? So let's look at a translation of English from German. Hmm. Right. So funkere funkere kleiner star, it is almost the same, but ach wie bist du mir so fem, they change the context. How about Japanese version? Uh, Japanese standard lyrics, or well, standard translation of this lyrics is Kira kira hikaru Yozola no Hoshiyo. So this is the translation of uh, this Japanese lyrics. You can see that the translator has omitted a lot. For example, there is no such sentence, How I wonder what you are. The Japanese lyrics does not have such line. I repeat, Takeshika-san has omitted from English lyrics when she translated um, these lyrics into Japanese. The original English lyrics is telling a story. It's actually a long, long story. But if you read the Japanese lyrics, you will see it's a very simple lyrics. Anybody can remember um, if, if you sing twice, three times. Considering that the original English song is a nursery rhyme, omitting something is not a problem at all because it can be very simple when we think about Japanese nursery, nursery rhyme. The important thing is that this song is very singable, singable lyrics. So when we sing Takeshika-san's translation, you will notice that the syllables fit perfectly to the original lyrics, means melody. The syllables is, mo is the most important thing when you translate lyrics. If you try to do word-for-word -word translation from English to Japanese, then there will be too many syllables, so it's very difficult to sing. It's going to be like a do 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 Whoa, the mountain of the words. I can't sing. Right. Then you have to have less syllables, means you have to omit naturally. This is because um, the difference between English and Japanese. So when we look at the translation of Takeshika-san, 
we can see that um, she made a singable translation. That makes perfect sense because it's a song and it has to be singable. And she still conveys this um, the atmosphere of twinkle twinkle little star. Okay, she's omitted a lot, but so what? Because the content of the story is not the point for this song. And it has to be singable. So we shouldn't surprise why she's omitted. And her translation? Kira kira hikaru yozona no hoshi yo Sounds beautifully fit into the melody, the original melody. I think that that was the purpose of Takeshika-san as a translator. Let me cite Richard Dyer Bennett. He says that, one, the target text must be singable. Otherwise, any other virtues it has are meaningless. Two, the target text must sound as if the music had been fitted to it even though it was actually composed to fit the source text. The lime shimmer of the original poetry must be kept because it gives shape to the phrases. And the four, liberties must be taken with the original meeting, meaning when the first three requirements cannot otherwise be met. Well, actually, when I was young, I practiced singing. If I translate these lyrics into Japanese in a way which is more like a so-called word-for-word translation, it's going to be like this. Kira, kira, chisana hoshi. Anata wa nande shou? Well, it is still singable. I can sing it. But, uh, for example, anata. Anata is you in Japanese. But actually, Japanese kids don't use anata much, and this sounds very adult. Japanese language, you can omit such as an or you, she, he. So I think very often, actually, Japanese kids don't say you or I. Considering that the original is a nursery rhyme, it is not a big problem to omit a lot um, when Takeshika-san translated into Japanese lyrics because it's a nursery rhyme. Wow! 15 minutes is very short. I wanted to talk about translation more, but time is over. So I hope we'll have another chance. If you are interested in translation studies or translation, here is the place to study. We offer MA translation. I understand that this is a very difficult time for all of us. Um, everybody is locked up. Ima so everybody has to stay at home. This will massively affect your life. Your everyday practice, our everyday practice has to be changed. Let's hang in there and let's hope that soon we can meet face to face. 
えとりあえず今この状況とっても大変なんですけれども、まあ、Let's hang in there 日本語にするとなかなか難しいですが、まあ、頑張っていきましょうというところでしょうか頑張りすぎてもいけないわけですけれども、えー、そしていつかこうビデオを返してだけではなくてですね皆さんと、えー、直接お目にかかってお話しできる日が来ればいいなと思っています Please take care of yourself どうぞお体に気をつけて Hope to see you again Bye